Good morning, I am Teresa Lopez, cardiologist at La Paz Hospital. First of all, I want to thank the organizer for the invitation to participate in this uh, symposium and all of you to attend uh, this uh, session. These are my disclosure. And uh, during the next minute, I want to focus your attention on this key question, how to use the latest ECHO innovation in order to facilitate cancer treatment and also to improve cancer patients' cardiovascular health, which at the end of the journey are our main goals. So what we need to consider to answer this uh, question? As you know, cardio-oncology world is getting complex. Nowadays, improvement in cancer treatment have markedly decreased cancer-related mortality, but cardiovascular toxicity is a growing medical problem because of the increase in cancer prevalence, because of the increase in the cardiovascular risk of our patients. We are treating everyday older patients with pre-existing cardiovascular risk factor and cardiovascular diseases, and also because the use of the different cancer treatment are related with the cardiovascular damage and we need to organize a cardiovascular surveillance during and after treatment in order to perform an early diagnosis of the different cardiovascular toxicities. And we know that cancer therapy-related cardiac toxicity has a negative impact on the global prognosis of our patient, especially when this cardiovascular toxicity limits the ability to complete oncologic treatment. So in this complex scenario, the main goal the main objective to tackle is to facilitate cancer treatment and to minimize cancer treatment interruption. And Advanced ECHO facilitated this uh, uh, task. We use, as you know, 3D ECHO. We can use also deformation techniques like a global longitudinal strain or right ventricular free wall strain. We use Advanced ECHO tools to stratify patient risk also to organize a personalized surveillance of cancer treatment, and most important, to detect early myocardial damage so that uh, uh, heart failure therapies can be initiated as soon as possible, and uh, we minimize the risk of cancer treatment interruption and also the risk of uh, clinically severe cardiovascular complications. And in fact, the role of uh, these uh, new techniques, especially GLS, uh, is highlighted in this new definition, international definition of cardiovascular toxicities. And um, GLS is uh, a critical piece of the diagnosis of asymptomatic cancer therapy related cardiac dysfunction. However, we are not able to use these tools, 3D ECHO and GLS in our daily practice, sometimes because they are not available, but in all occasion because uh, a, our patients have uh, a poor image quality window that do not allow us to implement this uh, new quantification software. And I want to show you some cases that highlight this problem. This is a 49-year-old female, former smoker with a past history of dyslipidemia and obesity. She has a diagnosis of uh, lung adenocarcinoma and a treatment with uh, cisplatin, permetrazet, pembrolizumab, and lenvatinib was planned because uh, she was included in a double blind clinical trial. So her baseline clinical assessment was normal, except an increase in NT pro BNP. So the patient was referred to our cardio oncology unit. And um, as you know, and following the rules of this uh, ESC position papers on baseline cardiovascular risk assessment, and also on how to use cardiac imaging during cancer treatment, we stratify first the risk of cardiovascular toxicity and because of her previous cardiovascular risk factor and the need of multiple uh, cancer treatment, the risk of suffering cardiovascular toxicity is at least moderate. So we need to organize a baseline assessment 
of left ventricular function and then to perform a close follow-up of this patient during the active phase of treatment. But when we try to analyze 3D echo, we do not have really good image quality. And as you know, this uh, analysis is impossible to use in daily practice. So we decided to test the new transducer. And um, yes, uh, if we take a look of these uh, two images, this is the standard transducer we use, which in general give us good image quality for at least 70-80% of our patient. But in some patients, in some patients with a difficult image window, we need a better image quality. And uh, using this new transducer, we were able to analyze uh, uh, in a more confident way the uh, 3D left ventricular ejection fraction of this patient and also the global longitudinal strength. So we were able to have a robust baseline cardiovascular assessment that uh, helped us to organize uh, the monitoring uh, process. This is another case, this is a 55-year-old woman with a breast cancer, HER2 positive breast cancer, a treatment with fluoracil, epirubicin, and cyclophosphamate, followed by trastuzumab, pertuzumab, and ocetaxel was planned. And um, this patient is also referred to our clinic for baseline cardio-oncology assessment because uh, she has a previous history of uh, rheumatic mitral valve disease. So in these cases, we need to perform uh, a, an assessment of left ventricular function because the patient is going to receive androcyclines and also HER2 therapies. But we also need to be sure uh, what happened with mitral valve because, uh, as you know, moderate to severe mitral valve diseases increases the risk of heart failure in this uh, patient. So this is uh, the echo that we directly perform with the new Philips transducer. As you can see, we uh, detect a normal left ventricular ejection fraction and moderate a large left atrium. The quantification of global longitudinal strain was within the normal limits. And um, we use also 3D echo to quantify 3D left ventricular volumes and 3D left ventricular ejection fraction. Uh, one of uh, the most important improvement in image quality is not just uh, um, to the echo for quantifying strain, but also the orthogonal views that we can uh, use uh, to analyze uh, 3D echo. And in fact, in this patient, we also want to uh, use this tool to analyze uh, what uh, is uh, the problem at uh, her mitral valve. As you can see, we have a um, mild to moderate thickening of the mitral valve, uh, which is uh, rheumatic, and uh, we were able just using a trustrathic echo to quantify the mitral valve area. And as you know, this parameter is less dependent on low heart condition than Doppler measurements. So in patients with, uh, who are going to receive chemo and who are at risk of gastrointestinal side effect, these tools help us to have a more robust monitoring of uh, valvular problems and, uh, of course, less influenced by low heart condition than a Doppler measurement. And uh, this is my last case. This is a 64-year-old man with a multiple myeloma. He was treated with bortezomib, dexamethasone, followed by autologous stem cell transplantation a few years ago. But last year, he develops a symptomatic progression and treatment with carfitomib, ledalidomib, and dexamethasone was planned. The problem when we perform the baseline evaluation of this patient is that he has a poor image quality. So we were able only to analyze 2D Samson uh, B-plane ejection fraction, which is uh, within the normal limits. But uh, after starting treatment with bortezomib, the patient developed uh, short breath while exertion, and he was referred to our cardio-oncology clinic. And um, as you know, we have a wide range of problems that uh, could explain this short of breath in 
patient with myeloma, heart failure, pulmonary embolism, infection. So we need to be able to help in the diagnosis process using our echo. So using the new transducer, we were able to analyze this time 3D, then ventricular ejection fraction, and also strain. Both parameters are within the normal range, and uh, the patient was referred to a cardiac case, to a thoracic scan, and a diagnosis of pulmonary embolism was made. So, but the the fact that 3D ejection fraction and strain was within the normal limit is very very important to uh, rule out heart failure in uh, this clinical scenario. So, in a summary, uh, cardiac oncology strategy needs advanced echo tool to improve baseline assessment of our patient and also monitoring. Thank you very much for your attention and I invite you all to join us at the ESC Council of Cardio Oncology.